Gorilla Physics. In these experiments we're going to calculate speed. It's difficult to really measure speed directly, so you have to measure two other quantities. You have to measure distance and time. I'm measuring the distance with this ruler, which I've taped down for greater accuracy, and I'm measuring time with these light gates, which should be more accurate than an ordinary stopwatch, which of course has that human error due to your human reaction time. What a light gate is, is a beam of light from one side to the other. Whenever that beam is broken, the light gate takes a reading. That reading is then sent to the control box here. The control box is then sending information to the computer which can process it. In the first experiment, the beam A is going to be cut by the card on the dynamics trolley first, and then beam B will be cut. So we're going to be timing from A to B. So if we set our distance, I can set this distance to 70 centimetres. We can use that 70 centimetres and whatever time reading we get to calculate speed. We calculate speed using this equation. Speed is distance divided by time. These two are the quantities we have measured. And this one is one we want to calculate. And here's where our units have become really important. So I'm first of all going to calculate using the distance I measured as 70 centimetres. And the time I recorded was 1.08 seconds. Now I can go to the calculator. I wouldn't want to try and do that in my head. 70 divided by 1.08 seconds. 64.8. Now that answer is absolutely meaningless until we put a unit on the end. And the unit is going to be centimetres per second in this case. Now exactly the same speed would be completely would be represented differently if we were doing meters per second. And that's more normal in physics. Same equation, speed is distance divided by time. This time 0 0.7 meters because there's a hundred centimeters in every meter. So 70 centimeters is 0.7 a meter. Divide that by 1.08 seconds, and our speed is 0 0.648. Again, meaningless until we say that is meters divided by seconds, meters per second. But what I've done there is I've actually calculated average speed. Average speed because during the journey the dynamics trolley will have sped up and slowed down. So the average speed between point A and point B is going to be different to the speed at point A and the speed at point B. So what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to measure one of them. I'm just going to measure the initial speed. So we don't need point B for this. But how are we going to do that? Well, as you can see, what I've done is I've put a card which is 10 centimetres long on top of the dynamics trolley. That is going to break the beam. As it breaks the beam, it will break it for a distance of 10 centimetres. So that is the distance we can use to calculate speed. So our average speed that we calculated by using the time from A to B was 0 0.648 meters per second. We changed it so we're just measuring 10 centimeters or 0 0.1. And we were only measuring the time it took to do that 0 0.1 meters at the start. 
time we got was 0 0.140 seconds. So in the calculator, 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.140 gives us 0 0.714. Meters per second. So, yes, it was faster at the start than it was on average. And we could actually go ahead and measure the two dis different speeds and then calculate the acceleration. But that acceleration is for another video.